Uh, One, my name is Professor Victor Chang. Hi, I'm very honored to give a talk. The topic is called an assessment of machine learning models and algorithms for elderly prediction and diagnosis of diabetes using health indicators. We, we have published a paper on health analytics elsewhere and the links here. And um, at the beginning, um, in the world, uh, we have all different type of diseases, but because uh, diabetes uh, usually uh, comes uh, with a few factors, such as um, we may eat too much, and especially sugar, and we may not exercise enough. And it's also uh, very dependent on certain ethnic groups, because certain ethnic groups uh, tend to be uh, likely to be um, getting uh, the impact of diabetes and also sometimes because of a uh, kidney problem. So uh, health, healthcare analytics can help us to spot and di diagnose all these diseases as well as to improve the healthcare quality and patient's outcomes. So uh, there is a growing number such as uh, 37.3 million Americans in 2019 or 11.3% uh, of the country's population now is even growing more due to the fact that uh, most people stay at home uh, during COVID and then uh, no, not enough exercise and, and then eat a lot of uh, stuff. So the primary objective of the research is to apply different machine learning algorithms to predict the diagnosis and diabetes. We need to, first of all, understand the data set and to have uh, extracted the insights. So once we understand that, we will be able to make very accurate and meaningful the diagnosis. So furthermore, these models are compared to determine the most effective model in this regard by evaluating their accuracy of prediction along with the other performance metrics such as precision, recall, and F1 score. So the aim of objectives, first of all, we identify the most significant risk factors for type 2 by diabetes and the correlation between them and to apply the suitable machine learning techniques more effectively for diabetes diagnosis because we know that um, for different cases and patients, the risk factor may vary. Some it might be because of age, some it might be because of BMI, uh, even other diseases such as mental health. And we always identify and analyze the diabetes data to improve its suitability by implementing sampling techniques and analysis. We compare the effectiveness of a range of different machine learning models by looking at different evaluation metrics to determine the best MAO solution for diabetes diagnosis. Then we identify limitation with automated diabetes diagnosis system and discuss how advances in this area can be explored to advance research in this area. And we always constantly cross-check and compare analysis with the latest research, such as one of our uh, paper um, that has been also published. And please also visit uh, our website and then you will, you will get more understanding and comparison between um, different um, study of the same subject. Then uh, for literature review, uh, as we have explained in other talks, the, the purpose of this talk is to give you the key messages. And of course, um, there are a lot of information and therefore uh, it will be helpful if you read our paper, you will get more information. So uh, I'm only focused on this um, page. So that it gives you a very uh, uh, important overview. And we have studied different researchers work. They use different machine learning algorithms and then to uh, focus on accuracy. And they have a different uh, variations. The highest we can find is k-means clustering random forest. So, so usually the, the benefits of reading the literature is to understand what others have done and to give us the focus so that we then know what are the techniques to be used. But also it gives us the kind of estimation we may consider other techniques. But then if there are other researchers that have done similar work, then it may mean there is a higher uh, percentage of reliability in the result. But then the most important thing is for us to try, try out because uh, each uh, research topic and each data set may be different. Therefore, we need have to actually try ourselves. So then it gives us a very good indication. We may consider those methods for our research. 
So for data and methodology, uh, first of all, uh, having a very uh, important strategy or framework will be crucial because it will help us to organize our research and then allow us to understand what to do now, what to do next. And then we then uh, follow a very good standard uh, procedure. So uh, first of all, we have the digital survey, then we have the data acquisition. So then we have the uh, data set uh, use for analysis, then we use exploratory analysis, then I'm going to discuss that a, a little, little bit more, just to reduce the dimensionality and optimize the model. And then we have the data pre-processing to have the data cleaning to obtain data without missing values. And then we also use other techniques such as smoke. And then we have a data split between 80% for training and 20% for testing. Then we perform uh, five machine learning algorithms, then have the model evaluation, then we then have a, a closer look of the results. So data set, first of all, we get a data set from behavioral risk factor surveillance system, BRFSS data. So it's a clean data set and they have collected uh, over 70,000 responses. So that in a way that we don't have to do this ourselves, but then uh, it really depends on um, the scale of the project, but we are very fortunate that we are able to analyze it and participants without diabetes, those with pre-diabetes and those with diabetes are distributed equally using small techniques to address initial data imbalance. So we don't want any data imbalance to cause any biases or, or some other unequal uh, var uh, variation. So therefore, uh, one technique is that we ensure that they are having a very similar or same uh, amount of data. Then diabetes binary is a two plus uh, binary target variable. A value of zero indicates that the patient does not have diabetes. While a score one indicates that they have pre-diabetes or diabetes. So pre-diabetes is a condition that you are about to get diabetes. So you are about to get there. So it's very important uh, that you, you then do certain treatments or certain medication to make yourself not getting into it. Because once you are in pre-diabetes, it is very difficult you know, to become a normal status. But then uh, uh, having said that, it's always important to understand. And also we pull a link of the data set there. So if you are interested, please go and download. Then exploratory data analysis, we use that extensively. So uh, it's a method used to investigate and analyze data using various visual techniques. These techniques allow data scientists to spot uh, any uh, normal observations, to discover trends, check assumptions, derive better insights for their tasks. So in our study, a correlation matrix is the first computer to understand the relationship between each pair of the variable. If there is a strong relationship between attributes, removal of the attributes should be considered through several types of data visualization techniques, including bar plots, volume plots, pie charts, and box plots. The distribution of the attributes and the data balance are analyzed to improve understanding of the data set and this feature. So then we use these uh, uh, techniques to know about data. So we need to understand that better in order to know what will be the suitable method to analyze and then make prediction. So uh, just to give you an example, of course, there are also other examples in the paper. So this one shows those with diabetes and those without diabetes. Uh, zero means no, one means yes. And then we check the health status of patients. The usually the higher the value means that there is something not, uh, not quite right. So usually uh, you can see this data. Most of people are like fine in their health in general, but they're showing certain symptoms. But then uh, when those people uh, without diabetes, you notice the uh, education level are high, but then there's also seems to be a correlation between people with diabetes. Uh, it comes with the um, uh, education level, but similarly with the income level, it seems like those uh, uh, who earn more, they tend to get diabetes. And similarly, those who, who earn more, they, they probably uh, are more careful about their health and maybe they do more uh, for prevention. So it's always better, um, you know, prevention is better than cure. And of course, this is just a kind of general observation. Um, 
data processing. So first of all, we then split the data set into 80 to 20% ratio for the training and testing respectively. Of course, you can also use other 70, uh, 30, 75, 25, but in this case that we uh, use this because 80% uh, of the effect in most cases come from the 20% of the courses when the data set was clean, 5% of now variable were added by using simple functions to all of the variables, except for the target variable. The training, the model with the missing data might result in inaccurate performance. The min max scalar was applied to normalize the data values before fitting the data set. The data set is extremely biased, which has 15% of the positive samples and the rest being negatives. To address this problem, the smoke techniques would apply to oversample entries from the minority class, resulting in an, an equal distribution data set over 200,000 data entries. As the data is categorical, then the uh, target variable is binary in nature. We apply classification models to determine the accuracy of the prediction. Then, um, machine learning classifiers, model selection criteria, because um, they are always uh, student asking, oh, well, which method, which one will be suitable, but it's very crucial that you have to show a critical uh, thinking because without showing that our brains are having this process, you know, then, then you can't justify. Other people may have their methods, but you need to be able to justify which method will be good for you. Similarly, there, there are a lot of uh, ways that you can learn the, the, the same skill, but you have to find what is the best for you. So we, we show that, uh, first of all, we, we try XG boost. So it's per, uh, optimal performance achieved on data set with at least eight variables. Therefore, it was determined not to be appropriate for this data set because why it may be extremely good for some, but not so good for some. And it is always better that we prefer a more balanced approach support vector machines were considered uh, not so ideal because uh, it has slow calculation times when pr uh, processing large data sets. So when a data set gets large, because it checks more and it needs more time and uh, under the uh, resource constraints, uh, SVM is not the one, but however you have a supercomputer or you have lots of GPU and that might not be a factor. The linear regression and K nearest neighbor reg reg regressor were not selected as they are re regression models and not suitable for this study because regression models tend to be the one that you know the data are, are quite good and you are trying to optimize it. But then because some data set has a, a wide range and it can vary more and it may not be the more suitable method to use. So artificial neural networks and other related deep learning techniques were not chosen as they would potentially be overfitting the model because it's, on the other hand, try to optimize and sharpen up and they may not be the right thing because sometimes a certain uh, data set, in, even in outliers or just or, on the borderline, they can be of interest to know and what to, you know, to study why people from health status would become pre-diabetes status and then why some people from pre-diabetes status then become diabetes. So that, that kind of data will be even more Oh, insightful for us. And to analyze all the options, the following five classifiers were selected decision tree, random forest, k nearest uh, neighbors, logistic regression, and a uh, naive base. But having said that, that, that uh, even though we may say k nearest neighbor is not so good, but then we try again because uh, one research, one group researcher say it was good. So that, um, we also have to balance everything. And therefore, we have chosen this five. And, and just to show you how it works, the pseudocode, because uh, in this stage, you can learn um, computing or any languages much easier than ever. But then it's also important that we know what are the uh, main methods, because you, you may spend a lot of time just programming, debugging, and then trying to sharpen up and get the result you need. But then the most important thing is that we have to get the algorithm right. So first of all, we import the data set. Uh, dimensionality reduction PCA, we can then just focus on eight uh, crucial variable instead of uh, more than 50, because some of them are no longer relevant. We are only interested in the one that we want to go on further and go deeper. And 
to deal with the uh, class imbalance and also data set imbalance, smoke will be also uh, very helpful for that. And then we identify the machine learning classifiers that use for this classification. So then we, we have identified the five decision tree, random forest, k-nearest means, logistic regression, and naive base. Then we do a follow five uh, because they, first of all, there are five of them. Secondly, if we, we can do follow with a, Larger the integer, but because you, you may miss certain things, so we don't want uh like like you you miss certain things and then you then uh, go on further. So that five for us is a good number. So then we then use them, uh, put them in an array, and then we begin to model, and then we try to fit them. Once we fit them, we then can um, perform prediction. Then once we perform the prediction, then we then compute the results in terms of the the classify classification report, accuracy, precision, recall F1 scores, and also Hemming laws, ROC curve, ROC, AUC score. And we'll explain a little bit uh, later. So the result shows that the diabetes status with re respect to the stroke, and you can see the healthy ones uh, that did not have the stroke. And, and of course, some will do. But then you notice that those with diabetes they tend to have a higher response rate to stroke. And similarly, those with diabetes, obviously, they are very, they have a very significant um, high values for uh, a disease, a heart disease or heart attack. Therefore, diabetes have a very uh, strict or very um, direct correlation to heart attack. Then most patients do not have a stroke or heart disease and also diabetes patient had a fractional value of the extra number of the strokes or heart attacks compared to healthy people. Even healthy people can have a stroke or heart attack, but their risk is lower than those individuals who have already been diagnosed with diabetes. And we can see that uh, in this figure, the patients with no diabetes have less or lesser mental health issues when compared to patients with diabetes, so, uh, so of course they get to zero. And then when um, diabetes um, patients have slightly high mental health issues as the data points are more predominant and continuous, it is also clear that the patients who have higher physical activity are less likely to have diabetes than patients with low uh, uh, activity, so those uh, who exercise a lot, they tend to um, be on the safer side, but then those uh, who don't, then of course, then you, like, like there is a correlation between uh, the physical activity and also diabetes, even though some people may have diabetes, if they exercise more, then it's going to make the impact uh, minimum. So uh, we then can use um, confusion metrics and also we can use um, uh, the features. Features means that we select the important ones from the uh, variables. So the data set used for this study consists of a 21 variable. In this case, there are 21 of them. So uh, we can consider uh, whether they have the high dimensionality, means that how, how they are related to each other, how they are, uh, so the darker the color means that there is a very high correlation. Of course, when you link to yourself, then of course that means once. But then what you need to do is that pay attention to those darker uh, colors. So for instance, uh, this one will relate to this one. Also, your general health is related to your physical health. And also uh, whether you can uh, walk and there's also the same. And But then uh, sometimes it's not very obvious, for instance, when you have this uh, lighter color. So then we pick the ones that gives more dark color. Then in the end, uh, we got the, um, eight variables, many BMI, age, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, general health, physical health, working difficulty, and income. Because uh, that, that relates to more. As you can see, there are more darker colors in this region. And also some of the questions such as the age and BMI are also in, uh, um, out of the interest from me medical staff, but also you can see they also get a darker color. But then we also use 
uh, principal component analysis called the PCA, the smoke technique is applied to overcome the imbalance of the output variable. PCA is applied to reduce the number of features and select only those that contribute the most of the target variable, leaving eight components. So you can see that uh, there are zeros and one, and then they have a, a different distribution. As you can see, you can class them one, two, uh, roughly three, four, five, uh, six, uh, seven and eight. For some people, they may even uh, consider that you can split this into three, but then uh, we then categorize them in eight so that we ensure that it also corresponds to our target. So um, performance evaluation is always interesting because we need to know what uh, the results will be and how uh, accurate they are. So then we use a, a random forest as the one uh, to check and we have the highest accuracy compared to all the five met methods uh, that, that gives about 82.26%. And, and that means that a random forest was 82.26% uh, accurate in distinguishing cases with or without diabetes in the test of, of, of sample. Of course, uh, no matter will be giving 100%, but then the higher, the better. We, we can then further improve all our methods the naive base performed the worst. The accuracy is just slightly over 70%. The precision in a dis in disease detect detection, the predicted false positive can lead to misdiagnosis and can cause the wastage of the healthcare resources. And improving the precision of the diagnostic models can help to improve this problem. And of course, we don't want those problems to uh, cause another problem or, or inaccurate results. And, of all the classifier evaluator, the, the random forest model has the highest precision of 83.47%, followed by decision tree, uh, just slightly over 83%, indicating they can correctly predict more than 83% of all cases predicted to be diabetes. So based on our analysis, then our algorithm will be able to make predictions and then random forest again, gets more um, or and also the highest accuracy for prediction. So sensitivity, um, we, we get the 80.45% uh, uh, for random forest against the highest. And then it means that we will be able uh, uh, to get uh, cases with diabetes in the test set was correctly selected by the random forest classifier. Naive base is the worst again and and it's just slightly over 67%. False negative should be avoided as missing the presence of the disease can lead to tr um, treatment being delayed and can cause real damage. And the specificity, a detection system with a high specificity contributes to the issue of over med medicalization as diagnosis a patient Without diabetes, as a person with diabetes can cause anxiety and unnecessary uh, follow-up procedures. The specific specificity of, of um, a decision tree and random forest reach over 84% with um, just slightly over that uh, with 84.05 and 84.07% respectively. So that means that they can correctly identify over 84% of cases with diabetes in a test set. F measure, sometimes we call it F, F1 score. It is an effective diabetes detection system and that should avoid both missed and missed diagnosis. But accuracy and specificity are conflicting performance metrics. F measure accounts for both position and recall the uh, random forest has the highest F1 score of 82.26%, while we achieve the best performance in all other evaluation metrics, which validates it the best uh, diabetes classifier in our study. So uh, we then ran, run those um, uh, analysis. So we then get the random forest again with more accurate in predicting cases with diabetes. So we get that about 83%. And in predicting cases without diabetes, 81%. And then we then uh, run this uh, so that we, we then can see that uh, it, it is uh, less able to identify cases 
with diabetes from all positive samples, 80%. And also then it had worse to identify cases without diabetes, 84%. Yeah, so we then make a comparison. Then we're going further. We now um, show all the five models. So we also show the critical thinking. We then uh, do all five together and then make a comparison. So accuracy, precision, sensitivity, specificity, F1 score, or or some people call that uh, F measure, uh, Hemming law. So then we then uh, provide them those results. So from accuracy to F score, the higher the better, Hemming laws, uh, the lower the better means that during the analysis, there, there's certain uh, percentage that you have missed completely, or you misdiagnose, or you get incor incorrect uh, results. So we want that to be lower the better. And you can see that um, if you, you add this two, you will get 100%. So F1 score and also accuracy might, might give you a very quick indication of how reliable your analysis and methods are. So according to this study, the random forest What's the best classifier? So this is the one we have chosen as the best one on the test set in terms of every metric. So uh, almost all the results, as you can see, random forest perform very consistently uh, above or slightly above the competing methods. The decision tree uh, was only slightly lower. Like you can, you can also make a comparison slightly lower than random forest tree, whereas K nearest means comes to the third. Uh, it's not a far, but still um, slightly lower than uh, both RF and DT. Then, uh, then you can see that logistic regression and naive base, they tend to perform lower, less like uh, mostly um, above 70%, except a naive base and sensitivity only having achieving 67.07%. Uh, so the score of the Hemming laws have slight variation with K and having a higher Hemming loss. Yeah, as you can see, although um, it was uh, having a good result, but having a, a higher loss, a lesser value of Hemming loss indicate a better classifier. But again, we can use data visualization just to compare the results. So uh, in this way, we can then identify these two are not, are not so good. So we, we don't have to focus on them. And then for some people, if they want to only focus on three models, they can then just use these three model and then further improve on their model so that your model might be getting improvement even above 90%. So that will be the next step uh, possibly uh, for future work or for people who can use this kind of approach uh, for your research. So you first of all, and identify what will be uh, suitable methods and then you narrow down uh, to just about three methods. So uh, for ROC, AUC curve is also usually used in machine learning research. So uh, for precision recall curve is perfect when it is a right angle or in, in perpendicular. So something like this, and it's very hard to reach one, but then it means that at a very early stage you don't get a false positive rate. Like that. And then you then have a true uh, positive rate if you reach, reach the a true positive rate in a very early stage, it means that there is shows a very uh, good sign in terms of accuracy and reliability. And ROC, AUC curve and precision recall curve or RF in figure 19 are highly perpendicular, as you can see from the graph and showing the model to be a good fit. The AUC score of the uh, RF classifier is um, 0 0.8226 and is hemming loss of 0 0.1774 reconfirms that it is comparatively better than other classifiers. So then we have another model just to um, show that uh, the results are consistent because results without consistency may not get you meaningful research output too. So the research contribution we have made is that first of all, a relationship between all dependent variables are exposed to discover the most important contributing factor to a person developing diabetes, it was discovered that the main health indicators are uh, BMI, age, blood pressure levels, cholesterol levels, general health, physical health, working difficulties, and income are the main contributing risk factor for diabetes. People with low social incomes are more likely to be burdened by illness-related treatments because income and diabetes have a stronger link 
This is especially true in nations like US, whereas treatment expenses are expensive. A more thorough study should be done in the future to address the rising cost diabetes has on economy in order to reduce the financial burdens of uh, diabetes, uh, diagnostics and non-diagnostic costs. A thorough analysis of how to prevent de uh, death due to uh, its condition, further information such as the electrocardiogram uh, results for di diagnosed individuals, uh, carnitine levels, and also the glucose level parameters should be investigated so that we can, can investigate more and to understand also the correlation between uh, the diabetes and income and so on. So, so our research conclusion is not just to use machine learning methods, but also find out more uh, insightful things for us to follow up. The conclusion and future work, the key contributing in, in, in work for our research would include uh, the development of the predictive models that use machine learning to detect people who were developing diabetes. The work presented a study of five classifiers uh, in this five uh, for predicting the likelihood of the diabetes. The RF classifier achieved the highest accuracy of 82.26%. The research assessed the prediction of diabetes based on the key features with the enhanced capability of the machine learning algorithms in classification, the model can significantly aid medical practitioners in the diagnosis. On future direction of this study is to identify the gene and clinical variables that affect diabetes. A more suitable uh, dataset can give more in-depth information on a variable that can be helpful in predicting the, the disease in a better way. We also explain possible future work, such as federated learning, adaptive uh, synthetic sampling, uh, uh, ensemble uh, classifiers, and so on with uh, justification. And why should you sell paper? So this is the latest research that apply uh, different um, machine learning algorithms to predict the diagnosis of the diabetes. The data set will thoroughly explore and clean in order to perform more effective analysis. The methods for managing the data sets were carefully chosen. Principal Component Analysis, PCA, was applied to reduce the dimensionality of a data set. The synthetic minority oversampling techniques, SMOKE, were used to stabilize the imbalance in the output variable. So the study identified the most important risk factors for type 2 diabetes and the correlation between them for a more effective application of ML techniques for diabetes diagnosis. This way is easy to follow and can aid doctors in spotting and diagnosing diabetes at a, a pro stage level. They can also be used to improve the healthcare quality and patient's outcome. Then we always blame theories and policies to resolve part of the real world solutions. So if you can, please visit our paper. It, it is free for you. Yes, it's free for you. And we will kindly appreciate if you can consider citing in our paper or style paper, if you find the, the work is relevant, helpful, or inspiring. Thank you so much for your time to listen. Uh, we're sure that we will, will be uh, having the opportunity to present you another work. Thank you. Have a good time.